am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's time to leave no dye behind. Well, I, clearly I've already done some yarn dyeing. I recently did a live stream where I took uh, some bright neon colors mixed with citric acid in fluorescent fuchsia, purple pop, and a tiny bit of frozen, and dyed 300 grams of yarn. The yarn we dyed was Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino. We dyed Wool of the Andes Worsted, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool and is non-superwash. And then we dyed Big O, which is 50% superwash merino, 50% nylon. Um, and it's a bulky weight. So of these, you can sort of see already that the color on our Wool of the Andes in the middle is a little more muted because since it's non-superwash, those colors spread out further. Now, as I was dyeing this yarn, I did have some leftovers. So yes, this was a leave no dye behind live stream, and I had some leftovers. I will wash this yarn off camera and show the finished dried yarn at the end of this video. But let's go look at our other leftovers. All three of these colors started out as some citric acid powder mixed with the acid dye powder. Once there was a very little bit amount left, I added some water so that way we don't have dry powders anymore. I no longer need to wear my respirator mask. Uh, and I debated whether I should add this dye onto that beautiful pink yarn that is still on the stove or if I should dye another skein. And my straw poll of the viewers determined that we will dye one more skein to finally use up this leftover dye. And for that, we are gonna dye Knit Pick Stroll. Stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And I am gonna prep the skein by adding on a removable nylon zip tie. If you wanna learn more about the yarn, tools, or equipment that I use in these videos, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. As for our stroll, I'm not gonna soak it for very long, but I am going to wet it and let it sit in here while I set up the dye bath. So it's possible there might be some dry patches, but stroll is pretty absorbent, and so I don't typically have a problem with dry patches when I use this yarn. So I'm just gonna leave that to soak in just some plain tap water. I just filmed the whole thing. All right, I've got eight cups of water and I added a non-specific amount of vinegar. Probably, this is now water, but probably about that much. <laughs> that was just water, but eh, that much vinegar. And then I took the stroll, which had only soaked for like a minute or two in that water, gently twisted it and arranged it in this pan and then sort of let it fluff up. And the reason why I have it slightly twisted in here is that rather than having all one side of the yarn all the way across and having like one strand have the most access to the surface and the dye, this is going to give um, a little more spread of color throughout the skein, plus add a little resist and it's a fun way to do things. So now I'm going to turn on the heat and heat this up until we're about to simmer so then we can add our dye. As for our yarn from the live stream, I did turn off the heat and I'm gonna let this cool completely in here. I don't think, the pink actually has struck the yarn pretty well. A lot of times with fluorescent fuchsia, um, colors uh, can take a while, but really we did not use that much dye over here at all. I think there's probably gonna be, eh, I'm not sure. These colors pack a punch. We are steamy with a little bit of some bubbles. Let's start with the purple pop. And I am, I guess am I gonna double down or go the other way too? Just layering that on. Don't worry, I will collect those little remnant bits. Um, but, I don't know if you can tell, but th those blues strike really, really fast, and then the um, pinks spread. So now I'm coming in with our frozen down there, then our fluorescent fuchsia, we're going to come in down on that other side. Now some of this will strike quickly, some won't. 
Um, but I'm going to rinse all these cups out and come back with the combined remnant. There isn't very much left, but may as well pour this all over because also it moves the yarn a little bit. And so some of that purple hue and those blues probably struck right away with the amount of acid. There is a little acid in there. The water, it's, I don't know if you can tell on camera, it does look purplish to me. Actually, here's a paper towel. And it's very pastel. It is definitely a purple, so there's more of that that'll strike, and I'm really excited. But now, I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for, I think, 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and see what has happened. Another option, of course, would be to move it now, um, to pick it up and move it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it not touch, and I'm gonna just let it be, and we'll see where we are once the timer goes off. Okay, 30 minutes later, and I've turned the heat off, but let's pick this up and see what we have. But first, you can see where we had the fuchsia and the blue and a little bit of the purple pop. We've got spread. They're still pink in the water, but, ooh, it's really pretty. It'll be easier to look at, uh, once it's dry and everything is laid out, but I did want to untwist it so we could absorb those last pinks. So now I'm going to let this sit and cool completely in the pot because those residual pinks from fluorescent dyes just take a little bit longer. Since this is mostly a live stream recap, I am going to do all of the washing off camera, but there is basically no color left in the pot. If you want to see me washing and talk a lot about washing yarn that is dyed, ha, hi. No. Please in your phone Go. Okay. Hey, kids. Thank you. If you would like to see um, some example and a lot of discussion of washing yarn with purple pop, go and check out my video where I washed purple pop yarn with Synthropol and dish soap and talked about all of that. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description. But now, let's go look at the finished dry yarn. Here is the finished dry yarn. We have our Big O, Wool of the Andes, and Swish DK. And again, the Big O is 50-50 Superwash Merino Nylon. Wool of the Andes is not Superwash, it's 100% Peruvian Highland Wool. And the Swish DK is 100% Superwash Merino. The biggest and most obvious difference is something we could still see when the yarn was wet. And that is that the Wool of the Andes on that base, the dyes spread more. We do still technically have speckles. You can see that especially with the blue and even some with the pink, we do have speckles on this base. But when we compare that Wool of the Andes to the speckling we see on the Swish and even on the Big O, they are more, much more blown out on the Wool of the Andes. Plus, the color is more spread out on the Wool of the Andes overall. The base is very much a pastel pink. Maybe there's a few light patches on it, but whereas there's more tonal variation on our superwash blends where we see both light and bright pinks. When I compare the Big O to the Swish, the differences are a lot more subtle. On the Big O, the speckles are a little larger and blown out, which can predominantly be explained by the fact that Big O is a bulky weight yarn. It is two ply and relatively low twist. So therefore, when dye strikes on it, when dye powder lands on the yarn, it can soak through the fiber a bit more. It has place to travel. There's less resist because there's less twist. And so that accounts for these very, very subtle, but still present differences in how the speckles look on the yarn. All three of these yarn bases are so much fun. And they're quite different. And so this is one reason why I love to play with different yarn bases. And so I think that in general, if you are dyeing yarn, typically you would wanna have one base in a pan at a time, uh, just for consistency reasons. But uh, for educational reasons, 
dyeing different bases side by side is a really great way to see, okay, if I'm doing one technique, how do these different fiber contents react? And so therefore, this means that sometimes if you want to get the exact same colorway on different types of bases, you might need to shift your technique a little bit so it can work. We weren't low immersion, so we were allowing for some spread. But if we wanted to try to get sharper speckles on that wool of the Andes, we would absolutely want lower water, much higher acid, and I don't know if I could get something that looked exactly like the superwash, but we could potentially get closer by decreasing the ability of the dyes to spread. So anyway, I hope that this project was fun. Here is our Leave No Dye Behind from the Leave No Dye Behind skein. Uh, the base this time is Knit Picks Stroll, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And I took liquid of the three leftover colors and we poured it onto this base and let things spread out. And the results are both soft and a little bit wild. Uh, there is a softness because of the space dyeing to how these colors blend into each other. But yet we do have very distinct bright pink and then we have a purple and blue. And so I think that it turned out really, really fun. I love playing with full immersion because of some of the softness that we can get. When you're hand painting and really pushing that dye in, you have more control over where the colors go, but then also you can end up with some harsher lines. And so it's really fun to see how things end up, especially when I'm not poking the yarn. Hey guys, I didn't poke the yarn and I wasn't that tempted to. I guess maybe a little bit, but I didn't debate it on camera the way I often do. It's no secret that I love fluorescent acid dyes, but they do tend to go a really long way. A little bit can give a bit of a punch. And ultimately, I think that this colorway is really fun. And I think that these could have been fun had I layered this leftover color on top of them. But sometimes, even when you're trying to use up leftover dyes, you might get to a place where you really love something and don't want to keep going. And that's fine. Save the rest of the leftovers for later. I mean, if you have powders, then maybe I would put them in, dissolve them in liquid and save them in a squeeze bottle, bottle or something. But there's no reason why you have to use everything up, even if that's what you initially set out to do. Which of these colorways is your favorite? It's so fun that there's three different bases that I dyed at the same time. It's been a while, I think, since I've done something quite like that. This live stream was part leave no dye behind, but it did start off with an unboxing. I don't usually recap my unboxings in any kind of way, but I thought that these new berry yarn samples from Knit Picks were useful enough that it's worth mentioning again in a shorter video and just giving you a sense of what they are. Knit Picks is now offering mini skein samples of 11 of their different yarn bases. And these are $1.50 each and you get 10 grams. And it's a really great way to get a sample of the base, feel it, maybe even do a test dye before you might decide which base you want to get a larger quantity of. Now, I'm not entirely sure why they picked these 11. These do seem to be probably some of the most popular bases that they offer in Bear Yarn, but I do wish if they were gonna do samples like that, that they would have, you know, in addition to Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, maybe also they would have the Bear Felici and Bear Muse that are the same number of plies and same fiber content. So that way people could compare those samples to one another. I did get super excited at first because there has been a mini skein shortage during the pandemic. And as someone who dyes hundreds and hundreds of mini skeins a year, I was excited for 
you know, one of my biggest suppliers of bear yarn for my videos to offer minis. But unfortunately, as of the time that I'm filming this recap, there isn't a bulk mini option available on the website. So if you wanted multiple, you'd have to purchase them individually and uh, they'd probably all come beautifully labeled like this. So I don't think that the intent, both with all these being priced exactly the same uh, and the fact that on the website they're marketed as samples, I don't think the intent is for people to buy them in bulk. Certainly you could purchase multiple, but it still for many of the bases could be more uh, cost effective for you to wind minis yourself. So I did want to throw that out there. But if you are curious and want to compare the different yarn bases, for $16.50 you can get all 11 samples, which I think is a great price for getting some samples. So even though this won't be a new source for me to buy bulk minis, and I do discuss the pricing and thoughts and all that more in the live stream itself, I am excited to have these minis and hope to keep them on hand when I'm doing live streams because sometimes I get questions about different bases. And so it'll be handy for me to have these so that way I can quickly show versus running and finding a full skein. So I'm excited for that reason. Even though these are all bases that I know well, I think that I haven't purchased Andean Treasure or Woodland Tweed or I suppose technically palette in bulk, but I've ordered multiple of all three of those bases and the rest of them, I've ordered bulk 20 packs at some point or another. I already put the minis away, but one big reason why I die and order a lot of yarn from Knit Picks is because I was a Knit Picks customer before I started dyeing yarn. And then when they had bare yarn in bases I already used and was familiar with, or I could buy that perfect black to go with my hand dyed yarn to make a project, that was really, really awesome. And so while bare yarn can be cheaper if you order from companies like Wool to Die For or Dyer Supplier that are dedicated to selling bare yarn, I continue to use Knit Picks yarn a lot because I think that as a primarily retail company, it is both more familiar to a lot of people and it's easier for people to get just a single bare skein in a base that they may know already from yarn that they may have used in the past. Uh, so that's why it's a company that I really do recommend. And I will also point out that I've been recommending Knit Fix for many, many years here on this channel before I discovered they had an affiliate program and I joined that. But anyway, what yarn bases would you like to see me dye in the future? Whether it is a dedicated episode of Dye Pot Weekly or it's a impromptu live stream, please let me know down in the comments below. I have a large stash of a lot of random skeins that I do need to pull through and dye. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And turn on your notifications, and not just so that way you don't miss an impromptu last minute live stream, but so that way you can uh, be notified every time I release a new video. I release content at least twice a week, often more frequently than that, and you don't want to miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching.